What's up, everyone? So while we haven't gotten any more information on Ezio's Roman set and how to obtain it, a lot of you guys on yesterday's video gave your own ideas and just possibilities, speculation on what may happen for us to get this gear. And I'm telling you right now, already it's a very coveted item. A lot of people are very interested in obtaining this gear set. So there's also one thing, just one thing that would make this absolutely incredible. And we're going to discuss that in this video. I'm Dark Strider, the YouTube Assassin. Let's get into this. Now, like I was saying, Ezio's Roman set, a lot of people are really coveting this. It's a lot of great pieces. The Hero Strike ability, a lot of people like. And people really want to just run around looking like Ezio. It would be like absolutely incredible. They'll have it both available for Cassandra. They'll also have it available for Alexios. And if you have two separate files, if you have like a Cassandra file and an Alexios file... All you have to do is get it once and what you end up doing like i've said before you go over to this owned tab when you go and look in your store and you'll see an entire list of everything that you have now if you let's say right now all this is on my cassandra file okay uh if i switch over to my alexios file obviously he doesn't have this obviously i don't want to go and try to obtain this all that's not how that works. All I have to do is go to the store, go to my owned tab, as you see over here, look for the equipment that I want, and then I'll just hit it, and then there'll be a selection where I could just download it to Alexios or Cassandra, vice versa, depending on who has the gear. Now, there is uh, no way that it takes from one file and gives to the other one. Both files have the same items. So I just wanted to point that out. Now... In regards to the whole uh, Ezio gear, I mean, people just want this so bad. It just looks so cool. Um, it says in a Ubisoft Club thing that it's supposed to be a community challenge. It says it quite clearly. So a lot of us are trying to figure out what it could be. So some people believe that maybe... It's supposed to be in place of the gear, the Abomination set, that we actually got in uh, the Atlantis DLC. Originally, we were supposed to fight all of the uh, monsters, the Medusa, the Cyclops, uh, the Sphinx, and we were supposed to get it uh, like a, a hard mode for those characters and get special gear, which was the Abomination set. That never came out. They instead just put it as part of the Atlantis DLC. But as you see, it says uh, unlock Ezio's Roman set and the Milanese sword for Cassandra or Alexios. Exclusive reward earned by participating in selected community activities. So that clearly means that Ubisoft is going to have something set up for us. Uh, I don't think that it's going to be what some people are panicking over. Some people are panicking like it's going to be... Um, like a special thing, like you have to attend an event or something like that. They're, they're not doing anything like that. So that's not what it's about. But the thing is that that whole set is really coveted. And the thing is, a lot of you guys have come up with some great ideas. You know what would really, really make this set even better? And this is kind of why I have like this love-hate relationship with Ubisoft. I really do enjoy Ubisoft's games. I really do. Okay. Uh, a lot of them have taken a weird turn. And Odyssey, I see as a massive, and a lot of you have been with me from the beginning. You all hear me all the time saying that Odyssey had a lot of missed opportunity. So one of the missed opportunities is actually the whole Alexios Cassandra thing. If one was the Eagle Bearer and the other one was Deimos, then what they should have done was had it so that 
you're playing this game from both perspectives and not just like switching off let me play my 200 and something hours as cassandra as the eagle bearer and if you did write that alexios was the uh, was deimos then let me have another 250 hours with him and then go back and forth and do that kind of thing that would have kept us invested in the game for a long time seeing two different perspectives seeing how one became the eagle bearer and the other one became part of like the cult of cosmos that would have been amazing so that was a missed opportunity another missed opportunity and so far there have been only two people who have gone into it in regards to this thing could you imagine if we collect the Ezio set and we're given the hidden blade what Assassin's Creed has always relied on the Hidden Blade. The Hidden Blade was Assassin's Creed. It was one of the most fun things that you could use in the game. Now, Ezio eventually learned how to use two Hidden Blades as he went and played around and started like murdering people and whatnot. But initially he only had the one. All right, it wasn't until he met Leonardo da Vinci that he had the two. You know what? Give us the one, give us the one hidden blade could you imagine if you were able to go into the game and new game plus from the very beginning of odyssey with the hidden blade could you imagine how incredible that would be you would truly be an assassin and i don't mean to like really crap on odyssey because odyssey is a good game it's just not a good assassin's creed game it has nothing to do with assassin's creed in fact, the story and plot, spoiler alert, just in case you're not at the end of the game, all right, I'm going to give you a little bit of time, but I've beaten the game, I've beaten it several times, I've beaten it on several files, and it's just really weird the way that this game is, all right, you're still here? So here we go. The whole point of the Assassin's Creed Odyssey was for Cassandra to find her family and piece them back together. It didn't even have anything to do with the cult. Well, the cult is involved. The cult's looking for them. But that wasn't even like her main story goal. It wasn't to obtain any of the uh, artifacts or anything like that. It wasn't for anything other than finding people. Finding your family. Discovering what happened. Later on, you do go to Atlantis. You find Atlantis. But that's kind of like an afterthought. That's like she's finding like her real father... And she discovers who he is. And then you get into all that other stuff. But if you find your family, you basically beat the game. A lot of Assassin's Creed purists and, and people who have played Assassin's Creed from the very beginning, they've noticed that there were a couple of things missing. One of the things was the protagonist in the present day which was awesome as far as, you know, Desmond went. Uh, Desmond was a great kind of protagonist in present day. He really did give us a lot of things going on. He moved the narrative forward for the past, for what they were looking for. Uh, you know, a another thing that was missing was the fact that you really weren't looking for artifacts. Odyssey was all about looking for your family. You weren't looking for artifacts. There was nothing you had to find. You know, even Layla Hassan didn't know what she was looking for until, like, she found it. Until Cassandra found it. So you had to wander around. Now, people have complained that Origins actually retconned a lot of what's going on here in Assassin's Creed 2. In which there are, like, several characters, statues down here, who actually predate what was going on in Odyssey and Origins. But they kind of piece some of it together. Like right here, this is Amunet, who is actually supposed to be uh, Bayek's wife, who all of a sudden renamed herself. Aya becomes Amunet, and as you can see, she kills Cleopatra with a snake. That is the time where Origins takes place. Origins takes place before that. This is when it happens. Um, Odyssey takes place around here. Uh, this is the statue of Darius. Obviously, it doesn't look like Darius from the Legacy of the Hidden Blade DLC. 
and you could see that his statue actually has the blade on the underneath but in the game we see that he's got it over uh on the back of his hand not on you know under the palm of his hand and um this says clearly atop this pedestal stands a statue of darius the male persian assassin he used the hidden blade to kill xerxes this is the first recorded use of the hidden blade so in odyssey is the first recorded use of the hidden blade but he wasn't an assassin because they didn't become assassins until origins so a lot of people complain it's a retcon uh i did a video where i try to piece it together and say look maybe he's just uh, uh you know this is like a spiritual ancestor where they recognize his efforts and they put it together uh in origins somehow cleopatra ends up with a hidden blade gives it to aya aya gives it to bayek and that's when you first start playing with the hidden blade it takes a little while to get the hidden blade bayek just doesn't start with it you got to be around level 10 and then that's when you're able to like run around and you know basically play as an assassin creed game but odyssey took a big step away from that and it was really weird odyssey came out and there was like a lot of things that had like changed there wasn't any sort of you know like a concentration on stealth and everything like in past assassin's creed games there wasn't any real need to find artifacts or anything it, it was really a, a huge step away from what we were used to in assassin's creed altogether so a lot of people became disenchanted with the series there were even some people that actually left the series over this game because they felt it just was not assassin's creed uh you know to those who did that you did miss out on a very decent game the game you know is still a lot of fun there is a lot of stuff you can do uh the engravings and everything really make this game and they make it a lot of fun so we really do want to play that kind of stuff uh again like i say this is a great game it's just not a great assassin's creed game because it really doesn't have what you're looking for in an assassin's creed game it's more of like just a roman fighting game but uh it it really you know it, besides that it, it still was a lot of fun you still had things that you had going on things that were fun to do uh like i said the engraving system was great collecting the items was great uh as far as like legendary gear those kind of things those were a lot of fun so you did have some stuff that like you really wanted to get into uh you know like your inventory was limited it wasn't unlimited like it was in origins but you did have like a lot of great gear and a lot of options and a lot of wild things that you could do so it was forgivable even though that it was an assassin's creed game but one thing that remained that really got people angry why did we not have the hidden blade now just imagine for a moment that we got this Ezio gear and besides all that hero strike stuff that we actually have a way to play with the hidden blade to like play this game would you new game plus just to play from the beginning with the hidden blade and i think that's why when we got the uh when, when we got the dlc with uh darius that they did not give us the hidden blade i think that they were worried that we were going to like start from the beginning with the hidden blade and we weren't actually going to play it the way the developers intended to play it but you know what give us the option give us the option where we could turn that off or turn it back on where we're able to play it as an assassin's creed game i think that that experience would be absolutely phenomenal i think that that is something that they should do and i think that if they don't it's a missed opportunity so ubisoft if you're watching this video if you haven't really panned out yet how you're going to do it how you're going to release uh you know like the Ezio gear and whatnot why not bring it back to tradition why not do it so that like we could play the way assassin's creed is intended and play it as an assassin's creed game play it from the very beginning 
New Game Plus, where we actually go in and we start actually assessing. All this other stuff is fun. Don't get me wrong. It is a lot of fun doing all those, you know, assassin techniques, the uh, jumping things, all that stuff, all these hero strikes and everything like that. All these attacks, these assaults, they are great. They are fun. But you know what? We really do miss Assassin's Creed. This game took such a step back from assassination. Um, it, it focused more on warrior, hunter. You could be assassin, but you really weren't a true assassin. You know, you could do assassiny things, but it really wasn't an Assassin's Creed game. And, um, you know, that's that's something that really left a bad taste in the mouth of like a lot of fans. So this is your chance to do right. And just give us the opportunity to play it with the Hidden Blade. Give us the Hidden Blade. Have it as a feature where you could turn it on and off. You could play this game the way the developers intended, which was, you know, just running around Greece, ancient Greece, with no Hidden Blade. Or we could play it in the way that the players actually wanted to play it and obtain the Hidden Blade. So many people were so upset that when we got the Legacy of the Hidden Blade tech, uh, DLC that we did not actually get a hidden blade. People were dying for it. People were speculating that the spear becomes the hidden blade, all kinds of things like that. And none of that came to fruition. Uh, you know, it, it kind of really was a letdown. I figured that Darius would have at least left us with that. And he didn't. I think it would be cool to play it as a true Assassin's Creed game. But anyway, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that they should include the Hidden Blade? Are you fine with just getting Ezio's gear and just running around doing like whatever like you've always been doing? Or do you want to see something more? Do you think that if you haven't played it in a while that you would come back to playing if you could play with the Hidden Blade? Is that something that you would want to see? Do you think that it's a missed opportunity? And what do you think the significance is behind us even getting Ezio's gear. Some people are speculating, maybe we're going to be finding something in Ezio's time. Maybe we're going back to Ezio's time. Maybe they're doing some kind of like HD reboot or something. Or maybe it's still a Vikings game, but somehow we're going to be finding certain things that have to deal with Ezio or something. Or maybe a sequence where Ezio found something uh, you know, that it was relevant to the Vikings quest or something like that. You know, there's all kinds of speculation, all kinds of ideas. None really know why that's happening. Um, they're even saying that maybe the Nintendo Switch is getting the Ezio collection and that's why they're doing it. But I've also seen where Ubisoft is having a sale on Assassin's Creed games. So what's really going on? What is the Assassin connection? And once again, I want to ask you, would you love to see other sets besides Ezio's in the Ubisoft store or in the regular store, not just the, uh, the Ubisoft club, but the actual store? You know, would you pay money for this stuff? Would you try to get it from the Ecos of the Olympians? Answer those questions for me. Let me know what you think. Let the community know what you think. And I would love to hear from you guys. Me personally, I would replay this whole game all over again for like my upteenth millionth time. And I would do it on a new game plus if I had the hidden blade. I would go in. I might even start a brand new file just to play it with the hidden blade because that would be absolutely amazing. But maybe I'm overhyping it. Maybe I'm just too excited for that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Other than that, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe because it helps this channel out an awful lot. Check out our merchandise if you want to support the channel. We have a lot of t-shirts, mugs, things like that through Teespring. So you definitely want to check that out. Check out my sponsors. They actually help the channel out a lot. Every dollar that you guys, you know, put into the channel, it actually goes into the channel, into finding things, into better equipment, things of that nature. So once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell so that every time I have a brand new video coming out, you're one of the first to know. And as always, thank you for watching. 
I'll see you in the next one. Until then, be good.